Hello and a joyful namaste. My name is Minko Butter, your host from India, and I'm so delighted to welcome you all back to the 10th episode. Now, these conversations that we have every single time are inspired from my four-week self-mastery programs that I lead for corporates and individuals. And the talk show, as by now you all know, are available on my YouTube channel. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and press that cute bell icon so you don't miss on exciting updates with my exciting speakers. I really, really enjoy and get excited about bringing their wisdom to you. Now, the theme I have chosen for today's interview is what matters most is values. And my guest today, truly embraces her own life. She's empowered by values and belief. I know you can. She's also founded Pieces of I that help support creative, kind, value-based soul leaders to start valuing their own intuitions. She's also a business consultant, a mental fitness coach, igniting impact with engaged partnerships and program management. Now, I first met her through a common tribe, the Human Bench, of which we both have been featured editorial contributors. Please join me to welcome our guest today, all the way from Chicago, Susan Lovelay Miller. Susan, so, so happy to have you here today. Oh, it's so nice to be here. Thank you so much. I loved our conversation in December. It's been a joy to get to know you better. And I appreciate you wanting to talk about values because it's something that really matters to me too. Thank you for being here, Susan. I reciprocate those sentiments. Uh, so yes, yeah, so value system, that's what we're going to talk about today. And uh, just earlier, Susan, I was remembering how as a kid, I had one particular quote on values. It was stuffed down our throats and I studied in um, convents. And so it was a quote by Mahatma Gandhi, who was a, you know, the world knows he was a social activist in the national mm -hmm. freedom movement in India. So he, you know, we, I grew up with, you know, the teachers pushing it down our throats saying, your beliefs become your thoughts, your thoughts, your words, and words are actions, actions become your habits, and habits your values, and values become your destiny. Uh, I don't know how much you relate with it, but I do today. And uh, Susan, as a mental and fitness coach, you as well have laid a lot of emphasis on values and belief. Mm -hmm. I know you can, right? And you and you so beautifully and in our last conversation, you talk about the light that is within each one of us. So tell me, uh, where is this whole ideology that you believe in emerging from? And do you do you do you think that to live a life of integrity, we all must align with our value systems? So tell me more about it, the origin. Uh, well, we each have core values that we live by. Um, we might not even know what they are. And I think a lot of people don't know that they, they don't realize that what they, the exact ones are. And I, it doesn't even really matter what the exact word is. Um, it's how do they impact the way we feel when there's, when we're supported or when they're out of alignment. And that's how you can start getting that clue into your values. Um, so discovery, it helps to uncover why certain situations might trigger us. If, you know, once you start realizing your values and seeing when they're out of alignment, you'll get that feeling that something's not right, you know, and, and how did it emerge for me? I mean, I can go way back, you know, at, at some point in our life, we're put in a situation where they're tested um, in a work setting or among friends. Right. You know, I will go back to seventh grade. And, um, you know, we all want to fit in and we're all trying so hard in seventh grade. And I remember there was this one table of girls that I really wanted to sit with. Um, you know, at that age, sometimes bullying is an impact, you know, uh, happening at that age. And um, I really wanted to sit with this set of girls, but. Uh, was it tough? It was, it was tough because really sometimes. Mm -hmm. Fitting in and being who you are, if that's out of alignment, right. you know, that can be a challenge. And so um, long story short is um, I wasn't comfortable with 
the way certain people were being treated. And, and I ended up getting rejected from that table. Um, and, but going on to find friends where we did align in values, where we did, you don't have to have the same values. Mm-hmm. You just can't have that conflict. You know, for me, it's like, I believe in everyone. I believe that each person has value. So leaving one girl out or, you know, being mean to somebody for fun is not fun for me. And um, I ended up finding a group of friends that, I don't know, it just, it just ended up taking that challenge and turning it into the opportunity to find a group of people that really was much more alignment with right. myself. At right. the time, I couldn't name which values were being exactly. impacted, but you know, I think we all have that happen throughout our lives. Yeah, so. yes. Yeah. So values, if I understand uh, right from what you're saying, is being true to yourself and and uh, standing up for your ideologies. Uh, is that right? Is that what what people are uh, given to understand by what values mean? Yeah, values. You know, it's it's those core feelings of, you know, the, yeah, being true to who you are. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if respect means something strong or acceptance, compassion, there's, there's a lot of values and that's kind of your, I don't know, I think of everything in terms of water. Like, you know, when you're floating comfortably on the water, that's That's when you're in in your values. Ah, that is beautiful. So uh, anything uh, going through life effortlessly, I guess that that uh, you know value systems I think help you just cruise uh, on an autopilot. Uh, you've got a very interesting uh, pieces of eye. In fact, Susan, I have to share this with you. When I read so much about you on LinkedIn, and I do you know such thorough research on my speakers, and and uh, from our last conversation as well. Uh, you know, when, when I read about pieces of eye, it just touched my soul. And I also thought about the eye, like in eye, uh, pieces of eye that help you see and perceive. So I'm fascinated. Tell, tell us more about pieces of eye. What's the background and how did that emerge? Yeah, thank you. So pieces of eye came to me probably over 10 years ago. But at the time, I was of the belief, you can't start a business. And so I continued on my way with working for other companies. Um, However, in 2020, with everything that was happening with the pandemic and the job situation and and everything, the idea just came right to light again. And um, my why is to value each person for who they actually are. So like one of my gifts is respecting and realizing and recognizing that your gifts are different than mine and they're you know, they're all of equal value, right? No one is better than another. Right. We're just all different. And so by taking it from a business standpoint, you know, you can take those pieces. So piece of I isn't really about me. It's about every person, experience, wow. place that's part of our world. We each have multiple pieces, right? We've all have all these different people in our lives. And so piece of I was made to collaborate and to say, you know, your gift is good. My gift is good. Together, mm-hmm. our gifts are even better because yes. what we can do, you know, we can do anything when we combine our talents, you know? So I started out, of course, with the pandemic. What was one of my biggest concerns was the at-risk and aging population, mm-hmm. not having um, as much knowledge of how to use technology such as Zoom. So back in early 2020, a lot of people of a certain um, demographic didn't know how to use Zoom. So my first initiative was teach one. And it was really, how can each of us Mm -hmm. help teach one person how to use technology to help get through that time? You know, that was my first project. And then my second project, I dove into a breast cancer initiative Mm -hmm. with a dear friend of mine. So that project was based on my friend's stage four breast cancer diagnosis. Sorry to hear that. And she was diagnosed two months after an all clear mammogram and ultrasound. Oh, that's that's And it was because she had dense breasts Mm -hmm. and the cancer was hidden in the tissue. 
So she wanted to take her story and make sure it didn't become anyone else's story. Mm -hmm. And so I've been working with her for the last year and a half, and we have now actually just turned it into a nonprofit, um, you know, clarifying yeah. the message, the vision, the values, what do you really want to do? Right. And then is this a business? Is this an initiative? We turned it into a nonprofit. We brought in the right players mm -hmm. and, um, you know, because really it's about her why yes. and how do we bring her why to the right. world to right. save life. That is so you know. beautiful. Bless you for that, Susan. That sounds an amazing endeavor. Uh, and I think these are the stories that we, you know, this is how this talk show came about. Like, how do we bring these stories and with you doing that monumental work out there and bringing her message and wisdom. And I hope today that's why I wanted to hear what you are doing and uh, so talking about being true and you making an impact in your environment uh, what core values define you I mean who is Susan how did you what are your core values well I'm going to show you my core values because uh -huh. my husband actually bought me this little pen holder uh -huh. and it says authenticity compassion and respect, oh, because true. these are the foundation for me. If these have to be present, or at least they can't be on, in conflict. Um, I want people to show up, show up as you are, mm -hmm. you know, have compassion for one another and respect one another. We each have value. Like, let's start there. And if that's there, you know, whether it's a supplier, a customer, a friend, family, this is what needs to be present first for me. Um, just that, I know things will flow. Yeah, that's a beautiful foundation, Susan. Uh, when you were speaking, I was just, you know, diving into, uh, I, I'm so much into Ikigai and Kintsugi, like we talked about last time, which I incorporate mm -hmm. always. So like, how do you embrace your brokenness? And how do you, in that brokenness, reach a stage of Wabi Sabi where you are imperfectly perfect? Uh, so rightfully, yes, Susan, for me, I would say transparency and sincerity come out on tops. Uh, in, and I try to integrate it in our conversations, interactions. And also, uh, Susan, do you think that we need to know our darkness well before we can tap and help others with their darkness? Do you think that that's something we need to do? I mean, I think it's helpful, you know, it's helpful to go back into your own life. Right. You know, a lot of, like I said earlier, a lot of people don't know what their core values are. Mm -hmm. And it's okay if you don't know what the exact word is. You do know what the feeling is. And when you go back in your life and you look at moments when you were happy, what was present? And when you look at what was sad, what was not present or what was in conflict? And it really helps you start to identify, you know, it, I always say, start with it. You can start with those feelings, look yeah. at a list of words and even just highlight which ones really like, which ones do you really feel strongly about? And it's happy and sad. I think it's easy for people to start with the happy moments. Right. Um, it helps to look at the dark moments because it's when you're in conflict with the values that, you know, if you're choosing joy, like your whole yes. concept of choosing joy, right? Absolutely, always. If you're yeah. in conflict with your own value system, or yeah. if you don't believe, like my mantra is know your value, live your values. If you're in conflict with, your own value or your own values, it's really hard to be joyful. It's just harder. Yes, yes. I think uh, you have to allow sunshine to reach the darkest places. And that brings us mm. back to the fact, Susan, that uh, you need courage. You need courage to be vulnerable, right? Uh, yeah. and, and, you know, the other thing with compassion, uh, don't you think compassion is is actually a relationship with equals? That's what that's what where I was coming from. That when you embrace your vulnerability and show mm -hmm. up as you are, 
uh, then you can see in all sincerity what the other one's values is values and self belief almost the same susan would you would you say that mm, i don't know that they're the same i mean self belief is believing you're capable and believing you can mm -hmm. and believing that you are and you are right are worthy <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. but um values is i don't know i i guess that, to me it's more values are almost more in the feeling category of like mm -hmm values are valuable and and that's uh, so you're saying that self-reflection might be a good point to start on identifying your values and and I think uh, Susan you worked in a you know with corporates and uh, uh, that's true of the workspaces as well right because uh, transparency authenticity accountability uh, they are great to build relationships. So it, do you advocate, it, do you include that in the work that you do with the corporates? Oh, absolutely. You know, definitely. You know, and, and you can't be, where I, why I keep authenticity as one of my core ones is because corporations listing their values, they need to actually be living those values as a corporation, because, you know, employees come to them, you're hiring people and you're saying, these are our core values. But if you're not practicing them in your business with your customers, with your suppliers, with your employees, it's really yeah. difficult to have teamwork right. when, you're, when you're not actually being who you are, whether you're a person or a company. So yeah, very first thing I would do with a company is, Mission, vision, values. Are these are these actually lines? Yeah. Right, right for you. Like, is this actually what you're practicing as a company? Because it really should show up in everything you do. Absolutely. It's it's an extension. Your why comes through in all of those. And it should be authentic. It should be who you actually are. That is so true. I guess the why and then the how and the what uh, appears later. Uh, that is beautiful, Susan. I think we very much uh, given everyone, all our listeners, a starting point in case mm -hmm. they don't know where to start looking for values, as well as so beautifully. I love how you've given tips on how to know whether you're in alignment or conflict, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so that's beautiful, Susan. Thank you so, so much. And I absolutely applaud you for the work you're doing in every single space. It takes courage to leave a corporate job to start this journey where you are empowering others to just be and to own up and show up. So thank you so much. Let's get on to the rapid fire round. <laughs> Hi, sometimes I keep saying um, the rapid fire is just too threatening and I need to find a milder, more loving, more joyful. Mm -hmm. So one of these days I'm going to do it. Uh, but um, if you've heard any of my other interviews, Susan, just one word, one sentence, just let's be spontaneous and quirky. So let's go. Uh, okay. Are you ready? So let's, let's go. Yeah. So the first <laughs> question for you, one tip to stay joyful. Tip to stay joyful. Mm -hmm. Believe in yourself. You are already worthy. Beautiful. What is your favorite smell? Ooh. That oh, wow, that's tough. Coffee. I love fresh brewed coffee. <laughs> and cinnamon. Not together, but I ah. love it. Isn't that way they say, wake up, sit and smell the coffee. Yeah. <laughs> Great way Love to coffee. wake up. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, assuming, Susan, there was no criticism in the world, what would your life be like? Oh, boy. If I could do anything, uh -huh. so I would do. probably start, and I know we can do anything, right? Um, I would start by... What I love to do is travel, take pictures and write mm -hmm. and then help people. I love, um, right. I love 
all ages. I love learning from younger people. I love learning from older people. I love learning from people everywhere. I'm not going to be done learning until I'm no longer here. I wish you all the growth in the world. And, and, I, I, and I guess you would just stay and put up pictures and you don't give a, you know, fig about any criticism. And they always say to avoid criticism, do nothing, say nothing, and be nothing. But that's not true. I think we need to carry on being and doing. Is there one thing, that's the next question, is one thing that you're avoiding in life right now? <laughs> Well, um, I don't usually do these. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not overly comfortable like on video. Um, yes, so. but, but you, you, you do realize that you have so much to share and I wanted to bring your message and you are a natural. Absolutely love doing this with you. So uh, the last one, let's put, put you at ease. What is universal compassion for you? Universal compassion is, is, I think it's living by my mantra of knowing your value and living your values and, and respecting others. That and is beautiful. If, if I, you can open yourself up to mm -hmm. others and that we're all, we're all in this together and we're better together. Yes, and, and not worry about being criticized <laughs> and judged. And, um, mm -hmm. and, and, and for me, I think, uh, Susan, the uh, universal compassion is actually the only guarantee of morality, so to speak, you know, uh, where so beautifully you said to respect people. Well, guess what, Susan? That brings us the end of that round already and how fast it flew. How, how was that for you, Susan? survived. No, you are wonderful. <laughs> Thank you for making this such a great experience and for your mission of, you know, choosing joy and, and helping others to experience joy. That is a beautiful mission. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Susan. I just feel uh, a joy is actually not a hockey pocky, you know, emotion, you know, we can feel it and our soul feels it. So last thing before we wrap up for today, where can people find you for, you know, maybe soulful partnerships or uh, program management guidance? Where can they get you? Well, the number one place I am is on LinkedIn mm -hmm. um, under Susan LaPlay Miller. And then um, I'm on the other socials, you know, less so, but I have a YouTube channel under Susan LaPlay Miller and Instagram, a little bit less so on Facebook and Twitter. But of course, my website, pieces yeah. of I, P I E C E S, not pieces, so many different pieces, pieces of I. And, um, and then I'm part of this catalyst with you and many yeah. others. Absolutely. So, love our tribeship there. Now, uh, thank you so much, Susan. That's, this has been valuable <laughs> based on values. And as always, I end with a light quote or a wisdom note. And today I feel compelled to share uh, Kurt Vonnegut Jr. who says, we are what we pretend to be. So we must be careful about what we pretend to be. Uh, so thank you so much, Susan. Join me to say bye to everyone and uh, I just want to say to uh, our audience stay authentic stay courageous and uh, see you all on the this episode's up on the 1st of February but see you for the next one on the 15th thank you and bye-bye to everyone thank you once again Susan thank, thank you. you so much and bye-bye